Welcome back. In this step, we are going to take a look at creating materials using textures that allows us to have more detail and control over the materials we create. So before we do that, we need a little bit more organization. So I'm just going to go back into my content drawer, up to my content level, and we've got a materials folder. We're now going to need a textures folder. So let's right click in some empty space. We're going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it textures like that and we're going to go into there. Now we need to import that face texture for him so we're going to right click import to this folder and in the chapter 4 folder you can see we've got t underscore blip underscore face. This is the texture we need. So let's bring that in. And you can see that it just imports it. There's not a lot that you need to do except for the fact that it's not saved and the material might not work properly if it's not saved. So what we'll just do is save all. It will also save this model here which has not been saved so that's fine and we now have our texture ready to go. So let's go back to our materials folder. We're gonna right click, we're gonna create a new material. It's gonna be M underscore blip face. It's a good name. And we'll open that up. Okay, so what we need now, instead of just choosing a value for base color, we actually need to include a texture. We need a texture sample node for that. So what we're going to do is right click and start typing texture. And the one that we want will be the one that's highlighted. So we will bring that in. And then I'm going to connect it up, but you'll see I get an error when I do that. Error. And importantly, you'll notice that I've connected up the RGB. That means it's combining the red, green and blue channels, which is what we need to have a color. We could connect just red, green, blue, or alpha, but that would give us a grayscale image, which we don't want. So RGB, and then we're gonna address this error, and that's because we haven't told it what texture we want it to use, it's just blank. So in the details panel over here, it says texture, none, so we're going to select the face. There it is. And then after a minute, you can see that that updates, and we now have that texture in there. What I want to show you now is, it's quite difficult to preview the texture on this shape, isn't it? And you can change the shape that your texture is previewed on. So I'm gonna choose this cube here. And that's actually a much better shape for this texture to be previewed on because it's essentially going onto a cube. I also want this to look kind of like a glass screen. So we need to do something in roughness. So I'm gonna add a constant in there. And I'm gonna set this to 0 0.1. I want it to be quite glossy. You can see now the light catches that, it reflects, that looks very nice. Okay, the last thing I want to show you here is how we make the screen that is his face look like it's emitting light as if it's glowing. And in order to do that, we need to plug something into emissive color. So to get this going at all is relatively easy because we just plug in the same texture. So if we go out of RGB and plug that into emissive color, let's just move that over. You can see that made a difference. That now looks much brighter. And we'll leave it like that for now, but we are going to come back to this. So let's just save that material. Excellent. And then we're going to go back to the model and we're going to apply that one. So blip face is going to go on there. And all of the textures are now complete. So let's save that. What I want to do is go back to my level. I want to put him in the level. So I'm going to go to my meshes folder. Let's find this guy. He wants to go below the floor, which is very unhelpful. Let's put him above the floor. I'm going to press the end key to make him snap to the floor. And I'm going to rotate him so that he's facing me. And this is important because I'm going to change how bright his eyes are. And I need to do that based on how he looks in the room. So you can see they're okay at the moment, but they're a little dimmer than I would like. So let's go back to our material. And we need to boost the strength of this that's going in. And we can do that with maths, math to the rescue. We're going to include what's called a multiply node. And there's multiply and we can use this to up the strength of this texture. So we're going to put the result of that multiply into the emissive color. We're going to take the texture as A. And you'll notice by default it multiplies by one. When you multiply something by one, you get the same result. So by default, it does nothing. 
And according to my notes, I have written down that I like to multiply this by 20 to get a much stronger glow from the eyes. So I'm going to type 20 into B. And then when that updates, you can see that now looks a lot brighter. So we'll save that. We're then going to go into our level again. And you can see that now the eyes are giving off much more of a glow. They really stand out. They really pop in the level, which is the look that I'm going for. And that will do it for this material. So all of the materials for the robot are now done. What we're going to do in the next step is we're going to create one more material that I'm going to show you, which is going to be our probably our most complex so far. Uh, and then I'll set you another challenge. So join me in the next step where we're going to improve the look of most of our walls by creating a new material for them. So see you for that one. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. If you'd like to help me create more content like this, please consider becoming a patron on Patreon. The contributions I get through Patreon make a huge difference in keeping this channel going. Remember to like, comment and subscribe to make sure you don't miss my upcoming tutorials. Your support and engagement mean the world to me and help my channel continue to grow. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.